You'll spend a lot more money than you expect when you purchase and build your very first cinema camera. Let me explain. I still love the cameras I used when I started creating videos for the internet. Even though they are relatively cheap, these cameras are the ones that helped me reach 50 million people on my YouTube channel. And in a lot of cases, I believe these cheap cameras are able to capture stories maybe even better and with more authenticity than a lot of expensive cinema cameras out there. However, around two years ago, I moved, I moved a bit away from YouTube and started working as a freelance videographer, filmmaker, and a new type of camera appeared on my radar. I wanted a cinema camera, and there's no clear definition of when a camera is considered a cinema camera, but to oversimplify it a lot, a cinema camera, it simply shoots beautiful footage. There are still a lot of options to choose from when picking your first cinema camera and the general advice from filmmaking influencers is to not invest too much in gear. The biggest mistake that most people do is to blow their entire budget just on the camera. Here to talk a little bit more about the new camera. Today we're going to be talking about how you can invest your entire savings into this new camera. So I decided to get something a little cheaper. So after some initial research, I was thinking of getting the FX3, FX30 or a Blackmagic camera. I really like the image quality of the FX3, but it's also, it's still quite expensive. The FX30, it's a lot cheaper, but I think the image quality is also not as good. And another option would be the Blackmagic 4K or 6K. And the image quality of this camera is fantastic, but it's a bit bulky. It doesn't have a flip screen, no autofocus and no image stabilization. I usually don't buy tech or camera gear secondhand, but during my search, I stumbled upon a great deal. I found a Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, two CFast cards, five batteries, a small rig cage, a small rig handle, and the new price for this would be 2,113 euros. But after bargaining a bit, I was able to buy it for 900 euros, so I did. Imagine spending 2,113 euros for a new camera gear. You still can't record. <laughs> you need a lens. This just doesn't stop, does it? All right, so I also purchased a speed booster lens adapter, a monitor, monitor cable. That shit is also quite expensive. Base plate and small rig rods, V-mount battery and V-mount base plate, D-tap cable. Quick notice to anyone that isn't into camera gear, you can pay a lot of money for a tiny cable. And then most importantly, beautiful Sigma lens. And now this complete setup would have cost me over 4,000 euros if I would have all bought this stuff new. Um, even though it's completely irrelevant because I didn't do that, but it's just such a great reminder for myself. And it really helps me cope with the fact that I spent a lot of money on camera gear. <laughs> All right, I've had this camera for over a month now and I've already done quite a couple of freelance shoots with it. Before I tell you what I think of it as a cinema camera that I use for freelance work, let me quickly tell you that I still can easily transform it back into a relatively cheap and easy to use camera that's also perfect for travel. I simply switched to a 70mm TT Artisans lens with an ND filter. The uh, lens was quite cheap but quite difficult to obtain as well. It was sold out everywhere. Uh, and I also added a camera strap and there you go. Feels like a point and shoot camera. All right, so here's my conclusion. After having used it as a camera for freelance work, a camera for travel and a camera for making YouTube videos. <laughs> this is what I think of it. So what I like, I love the look of the footage it's able to produce. It's also a really cheap camera for what you get, especially if you get it secondhand and it doesn't have any problems. Um, and also the menu system is super easy to learn and use. I also like the fact that you can rig this camera out into a professional looking cinema camera. And that also helps you to make the renting price for your camera during freelance work higher. Although this is also possible with almost any camera. So, and what I dislike about this camera doesn't have a flip screen, doesn't have autofocus, doesn't have image stabilization. Although these three things, that also helps you how to learn to film, especially if you're a beginner. So if this is your first cinema camera purchase, these could also be seen as positive things. 
Another thing I dislike, battery life of the in-camera batteries suck, but I have bought V-mount batteries anyway. Um, also, no internal ND filters. Not that many cameras have this, but the Pocket 6K does, and I really like that when I filmed on that camera. All right, so final most important question is, would I recommend this camera as a first cinema camera purchase? And the answer is a 10 out of 10 recommendation, yes. Because you just can't beat the footage, the beautiful footage and the beautiful colors for a camera at this price point. So if you're considering getting it, please check out the link in the description for my camera and all of the cinema accessories. Thanks so much for watching. Check out some other content right here. Peace out. <laughs> oh shit, a real life potato camp.